morning. Hey, Aaron. Hey, mate. I'm gonna wait here for a bit until maybe Dan shows up. You you already know about that. Yeah, um, yeah. No. I'm gonna wait till uh, till uh, Dan shows up. Sure. I need to, to also make sure that people register for that group SIO thing so that they get updates on the meetings. I'll. Um, if if you're short on time, I'll explain to you on Slack later on. Uh, sorry, uh, I was just reading your message on Slack and I missed what you just said. No, I, I was saying that uh, I need to make sure that people register to that group SIO thing so that they get updates for the oh. meetings. Yep, yep. I will set that up. Uh um yeah i'll set that up before this week is out i think i'm already probably registered on there somewhere um so i just have to see i can check give me a sec No, you actually are not on the list. Okay. So I'll have to register and join and all that. Um, so there's a, there's an email address apparently that you need to send an email to and you get a reply with what you need to do to register. Or I, I suppose, you know, it subscribes automatically when you send the first email. Right. And do you recommend that I use uh, my corporate account for that one? Whatever you want to use for this project. That's that's your decision. Hi, Igor. Good morning. Good morning. Um, are we sure that this is the only link, uh, Adrian, that people can join? Because last time we had... Yeah, this is the only Zoom meeting. Um, I will go to the, the old meeting in 30 seconds or so to see if there's anyone there and direct them here. Hey, good morning, Arun. Good morning, Igor. Adrian. Morning, Dan. Good morning. Dan. Good morning. Okay. So, so I was waiting for you, Dan. Uh, I want to go uh, to to the old meeting link, like go to meeting for a minute to see if anyone is still there, and I'll wait for a couple of minutes and send them to the Zoom one. Okay. I, you know, I tried to do that the last time, and then um, I wasn't able to get into the meeting. It kept saying my account was no longer valid. So, see if you have better luck. Okay. Well, I'll I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay. See you soon. Good morning, Tom. Morning. How's it going? Not too bad at all. Is that a real background, Dan, or is it a? It Zoom is. One? That's that's me in the office, so it's not Zoom. Right.
I heard the funny news that now Zoom is asking people to come back to their offices. Yeah, I did see that. That's a little. <laughs> uh, that was funny. <clears throat> yeah, we don't have our uh, we don't have our uh, sort of uh, uh, free period before we start recording now with the new tool. <laughs> Yeah, I was informed by Adrian. Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, we don't have that that minute of free speech. Got to be on our best behavior at all times now. Exact. Uh, uh, Gary, is is there a reason why that is, uh, Dan? Is it because we are on a paid, uh, non-paid plan, or something like that, or? Uh, no, I mean, I would hope that the OCP is uh, is forking over some money for the fine people at uh, at uh, what is this Zoom or GoToMeeting? <laughs> Actually, Zoom. It's a Zoom. Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I think it's a paid plan. I think they just have it set up by default, probably to record everything. Um, right. Let's see if I can turn it off. I don't actually even see a button to deactivate that. No, Adrian might have um, he might have some powers that I don't have. Maybe that's a very Bridgewater move, you know, to record everything. Yeah, you're always under observation. Oh, actually, we do have some uh, you know, some options here. Look, I can blur my background. Let's see how good their blurring effect is while we're waiting. Eh, it's eh, uh, it's mediocre. <laughs> All right, Adrian was saying that he was uh, waiting on the other meeting to redirect folks over here. So he'll be yeah, I over. Think he's, I think yeah. he's back. It's probably a good thing. Welcome back, Vincent. Oh, Hope here he is. Yeah. Hope your vacation was awesome. I'm still I'm still abroad. I'm in France at the moment, uh, but but working, but just a little off hours. Okay. Thank you. Oh, so your day would start at two o'clock in the afternoon right Vincent well no it does it does start when I wake up Arun <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> no I was but thinking man, meetings, if you wanted to keep up with the Pacific time zone that's why I was... yeah the meetings do start um more closer to three or so um so yeah it, it does make for some funky days as Adrian knows that very well yeah when I was hey. uh I was on the East Coast for a while, and it was actually fantastic because you got up early, you'd eat breakfast, like you would do a bike ride or something like that. Then you'd sit around around noon, and then people would start filtering in. Like you had a late day, right? But it was still better. I, I preferred it. All right. So we are six minutes in. I I went to the old uh, meeting for a couple of minutes. There doesn't seem to be anyone there. Uh, so I guess um, people are already joined here. Um, I have a couple of items. By the way, the, the recording has started already. This is automatic here, uh, just for everyone to, to be aware of that. Um, I, I mean, that was a dialogue that you had to accept at the beginning anyway. Uh, so until we get like further permissions from um, Kevin from OCP, uh, this is how stuff is going to work for a while. Um, right, so um, I will start with a couple of questions. I know um, Arun is, uh, is short on time today, uh, so let's do a quick status before we get into the more longer questions. Um, Arun, you want to start with the update on OSFCI and SAT? Yeah, so we've had some recent org um, changes and also an interaction with the business legal team that uh, sort of filters uh, downloads on the CI. And it's been a very long uh, process. So I'm going through that. We have been going through that for a fair while, but right now it's like a crunch time where we have to hit certain milestones and um, I'm sort of the only resource in that um, context. 
So I'm just sort of handling that. So once that uh, situation is passed over, I'll have time to start focusing on the set and uh, getting the integration up uh, for October. So hopefully I expect things to get better within a week or two. Um, that's it from my end. I'm happy to answer more questions, Adrian. All right, thanks, Arun. Um, just uh, for everyone to, to, to be up to date, I am working with Arun mainly on Slack. So we, we have like a, a more frequent interaction there to make all of this work. Um, all right, uh, next item, just a, a heads up, uh, Young from Microsoft is probably gonna be away for a couple of weeks um, due to personal circumstances. Um, right, um, what I've been doing uh, is I moved to the PCI uh, crawler repo, like fully, it is now under the OCP uh, umbrella. Uh, everything is done with legal and, and everything. I had to go through some steps with Kevin as well, but now we have like the whole history and, and everything uh, actually moved. Uh, and the old link will actually point to the OCP one if uh, people actually go to, to the Facebook one. Um, we, I don't see Paul on the call. I will, I'll talk to Paul separately and, and let him know about this change because he's working on, on that code. Um, and I am currently working today, actually, uh, on the CI for um, OCP Diag set. Uh, that being said, um, for me at least, I don't know, maybe it's my environment, but this fails to compile as, as it is the, the code on the main branch. Uh, so I, I need to fix a couple of things there. I need to remove that autoconf uh, step that is manually done through another repo. Uh, I need to update the, the C++ API because it's using an, an old uh, archive of the source codes and make this uh, release uh, automation on, on tag pushes. So I wanna get it to like a, a production state that we get automatic binaries, at least for x86, 64 uh, out of it on, on code push. Adrian, um, first of all, thank you for doing that. Um, I don't think you should have to do that, though. That seems like something that we should be doing, right? Well, you know, the, the agreement was uh, Dylan finishes up with the documentation and uh, a manual binary build, and, and I do the GitHub actions and CI, CD, and all of that. I, I, don't, I don't mind working on this. Like, we're all in, in the same boat. Okay, well, I do have a quick question though, um, just so that uh, we can do a better job in the future of making sure that we're putting out something that's like a fully polished, you know, uh, engineering artifact, I guess. Um, when you say that you're having trouble getting it to build, are you having trouble getting it to build on GitHub CI or are you having trouble getting it to build locally? Locally. I, I, I did exactly what the readme says. Well, the readme has some typos in it as well. But okay. ignoring that, the functional steps uh, fail to build the, the thing. Yeah, I I Igor, is this something that you could help us take a look at? This is the diag that um, Dylan had I'm, done. I'm, I'm already fixing that. Okay. In that case, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go, but don't, don't be shy about saying, hey, look, you know, you guys need to look into this. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm triaging them. As, as I need, but uh, for this particular case, I'm, uh, I'm setting up the CI, so I need to understand how it's built anyway. Fair enough. Are, are you having issues with the actual, uh, like Docker container plus Bazel interactions or where, where are you hitting issues right now? It's uh, the, the Bazel build fails to compile. Like I, I get some compiler errors. Okay, but not necessarily with the, the container itself. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I, I'd be interested to take a look at that too after. Thank you. Thanks for pushing through that. Yeah, no worries. Um, again, maybe, this... maybe, I'm, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but so far. Is it a source code problem or compiler's pro problem? Uh, so the first thing I hit, 
I, I don't want to waste everyone's time with details, but I'll quickly answer your question. Uh, I hit one problem due to the autoconf uh, header file that gets generated. The one that is in the repo right now, which was manually put there, uh, is missing some defines, which then makes the code fail to compile. Uh, and then I hit some um, uh, flag uh, for compiler uh, problems. I am kind of guessing that the second problem is uh, maybe Dylan was using uh, uh, Clung for compilation and I just have GCC on, on my system. It, it may be that, but in my mind, at least, it should compile with both of them. So if one fails, then, you know, that, that's a problem still. Yeah, okay, at least thank you. highlight that, right? You know, at the very least. I'll I'll deal with it. I'll I'll make a, a list of problems if, if you're interested in, in that and uh, it, it should work at the end of this. Um all right, so that's the the diag set. Um I have no other updates on, on other artifacts. Um do we have Microsoft? I don't see Boshan. I don't see Rajat. Okay, I I would have like the an update on the CTAM repo as well, maybe next week. Uh, just one quick question, guys, before I jump off. Uh, so for the actual summit, what is the current status in terms of uh, how we are planning to uh, do the thing? I did hear from Adrian that we have an experience center option, and then the plan is to sort of put the material in um, existing accepted talks. Is that the rough plan? Um... Dan, do you wanna you wanna take this one? I think you have most context with Paul on the OCP summit. Uh, I haven't tied off with Paul on the OCP summit. We have been talking about the uh, OCP crawler uh, or uh, PCIe crawler diag, but not not the summit. Um, I do know that Paul had reached out to uh, either Kevin or Michael um, about getting a slot, and then there were a couple things that they mentioned that they could do. Uh, as you said, the I hadn't heard the experience center. I had heard a workshop session. Um, which we were considering. I don't know that I necessarily want to do that. Um, the value that I thought um, that we got out of sort of doing the, the the keynote talk or whatever you want to call it is that it was recorded and it was up there and that people could find it. I actually thought that was more valuable than the, the, the live presentation. Uh, the Experience Center, I don't think I would want to sign up for that one because it was sort of like two days of being trapped in the booth and we're not selling anything, you know what I mean? And if you look at the Experience Center, it's a lot of that, right? Um, I don't know if that's the appropriate place for us, but the workshop might be. I need to learn a little bit more about what that means. Um, what I'd really like, um, although I don't think there's a formal definition of this at the uh, at the OCP conference, is sort of like a boff, like that birds of the feather session. I think that would be ideal for us. And maybe that's what their workshop is. I need to learn a bit more about it. Um, so the the experience center, I think that's that's my confusion. I remember reading uh, the email uh, between Paul and someone from OCP, uh, and it was a, a workshop, not not the experience center. Okay, that that so, probably makes more sense to me. Can do you know what the workshop is, Adrian? Exactly. I need to dig for my emails. I, I, don't well, know right can, now. I can look at it as well. Let, let me take this as an item and I'll check it out and see if it makes sense for, for what we're doing here. The other thing we can do too is we can just put together a video and present that way as well. I'm happy with that. But the only um, two talks that I knew that we were planning to sort of embed ourselves into is Adrian, your demo for CICD, just basically showing off the OCP diags running. And then um, the Microsoft talk that they're doing with Google on the... Um, well, actually, I guess there's two. There's a Microsoft talk that we're doing with Google on the management interface for uh, GPUs. That one will get a small plug in there because they'll say, hey, and we're using the OCP diagnostic output format. And then the final one that we're going to do is some NVMe testing and standardization around telemetry. And that's a, a group Google slash meta slash possibly one other third 
party uh, disc vendor uh, speech, and they're going to kind of give us a call out as well. Uh, we'll probably link to a deck. Um, but those are the two that I know that are top of mind for me. Yeah, for the GPU thing, uh, we never heard back from Bhushan about those that plan to kind of send us some NVIDIA thing, and he was going to respond on that thread with JM and all. Um, okay. I haven't seen anything so far. I, I did talk to... Um, uh, Bouchon, and then internally, Justin York on our side, and that that was their plan. We talked via email. Yep. I, I don't know about the physical GPUs, though. I haven't been involved in that conversation. I do remember seeing that thread. So here's yep. here's a suggestion. Oh, here here's a sorry. If you're Aaron, do you want to finish first before I change slide? Go ahead, John. Okay. So here's a suggestion. Um, if we were thinking of having a recording, um, having it available beforehand, and if we do have an opportunity to put it on the slide, that there can be a hyperlink to that recording, meaning that people can more easily access it. It's just a bit of organizing in advance. Yeah, that, that's an option. Uh, what I was uh, thinking uh, is kind of in the lines of what Dan described. So we we do have a couple of accepted talks although not specifically for this group but people involved in this group as well so that's like the uh the the talk from um, hp from Arun, uh and uh then there's the microsoft gpu compliance and i think the the ssd is one uh, nvme is one uh so in in all of those we can probably have like a, a reference or something to uh, to the OCP test and validation work. Uh, whether that reference goes to a recorded video, I mean, we can make this decision later on. Doesn't need to, to happen right now. Yeah, if we do decide to do that, though, I'm happy to do that. That's probably, it's kind of the same work that we would do in giving the talk, right? It's just uh, giving the talk somewhere else, essentially, right? Yeah, you know, I, I thought about this, and in a sense, uh, this this is also valuable because uh, there might be different people going to the different talks. So uh, actually, by having that link, it gets more exposure than having just one talk that a certain group of people goes to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can sorry. give a whole slide or two on what we've done, and then. Uh... I think a joke for Dan is that I think the talk, this, you know, place would be much more pleasant uh, where the video gets done. So I think you have much more control on how the audio will sound and visuals. So I think it might be actually works out even better. Yeah, for me, I like the durable artifact, right? Um, yeah. Which we did get that with the talk, right? Um, I've never actually went back and looked at them, but, you know, it looks like they do a pretty good production on them. I so did like, watch it. I did as well. And I sent it on to other people. Um, so if you were doing it like the background and the optics that you provide with the recording is is important, you know, having a background that has OCP on it and all of those types of things. So there's there's a little bit more than just speaking if we're going to do something that looks as close as possible to being something that was presented as a talk. Yeah. The last time we did it, um, we uh, just narrated over slides and video. Um, we could do that again, or we could do like the little talking box in the corner. We can figure it out if we decide to do it. Right. Okay. Uh, so that was actually my, my third question. Uh, but Aaron started that topic. So I guess we've covered that. Um, at this point, I am actually out of topics right now. Um, does anyone have any other updates or topics? I have, a, have a few. Um, one is uh, why you were out, Adrian um, Satish uh, from Meta. Um, he had uh, put together uh, with his team a really nice presentation on uh, basically a lane margining tool that they were using for PCIe. I shopped that around at, uh, at Google here a little bit, and um, there's a similar effort here as well. Uh, and they do have interest in sort of combining forces and things like that. So I was going to reach out to Satish and see if we're interested in turning that into an OCP diagnostic. It did seem like there were um, was interest around that, right? Um, some of the problems that they pointed out with BCI crawler are things that we've seen as well, like, you know, basically the uh, the tree getting cached and things like that. Like we've run into that problem too. 
So I think there's some benefits there, particularly on the manufacturing side, maybe less so on the data center side, but we are interested in exploring that. And then the last piece of errata is the um, storage folks have created a little staging repo. I know that you saw that. I saw your email. Uh, I'm going to make that private so they can go and kind of get their stuff in order. And then the plan is to turn that repo down once they've had, you know, basically time to uh, get everything organized. And then we're going to set up separate repos for each tag that they kind of publish like we've been doing. Okay. Um... Yeah, thanks for the, the update, Dan. Uh, you also sent me like the, the presentation. Uh, I, I did look at that uh, and I posted in, in the public uh, space on the uh, drive, on the Google Drive. Uh, the link is in the meeting notes. I am not sure everyone has access to the meeting notes document. Maybe I should make this public as well or some public version of it. Um, if... Uh, I don't know. Would, would you say that we need to like publish this link with the LMT presentation somewhere else, or is is it I, enough to be in the notes? I would probably leave it in the notes. Let's wait until there's an actual diag. Um, if everything comes together soon, though, uh, in three or four weeks, like we're looking at having you know a few diags here, right? We'll have SAT hopefully cleaned up with its build steps and everything there. Um, we'll have the PCI crawler diag. Uh, we may have some of the simple storage diags, right? The FIO wrapped ones. We might have a few NVMe related diags. Uh, if we had the link margin stuff, like we're actually starting to get out to a fairly decent suite. Um, we may want to start putting together like a little Gantt chart and how all this comes together and then form it into like a proper narrative, right? Like there's lots of good Lego building blocks, but I think we need to start building the uh, narrative about how they all come together. I agree with you on the timeline topic. Um, I I kind of intentionally left it open so that people deal with stuff uh, in their own, at their own paces. Um, but maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to have like a, a reasonably high level timeline. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things, um, you know, not unique to OCP, but any type of, uh, you know, sort of a, or organization like this is that we need to be able to run at the speed of business. But the reality is that everybody's doing, you know, all of this stuff on their own time and pro bono work and everything else. Like, you know, uh, we need to make sure those two things kind of line up and that, you know, we're an accelerator and not a hindrance is what I would say. Okay. Yeah. So um, I don't know exactly how to, to start with this. Um, thanks, Adam. See you next time. Um, Maybe I'll make a document and everyone can put their own timeline expectations on it or milestones or something like that. Yeah, I think um, maybe let me clarify, like I'm not really looking for so much like a hard schedule or deadlines and things like that. I don't know that that's necessarily realistic, but more of like, these are the things that we know are coming. These are the things that we know we have solid commitments for. And when we get those things, this is sort of the capability and the, the, the new, I guess, capabilities that we're bringing to the table here, right? Like how do you put all this together and how do you use it? Okay, okay. Actually that intersects with, with a different topic that I, I was discussing with Karen and, and others internally, which is uh, we, I think we need a classification matrix for the diags that we are maintaining yeah. uh, for various aspects and whatnot. Uh, and that should give people the option of making choices of whatever they want to use. Yeah, and I think actually, I, I like the way you put it with the classification matrix, because we started with the mission of sort of core diags, which was buses and CPUs and memory, right, which we'll have soon. And now it looks like we're getting a little bit of storage and then um, not not GPU yet, but GPU is probably coming soon with sort of wrapping up some of the field diags from some of the popular GPU vendors, right? Um, like we're starting to get complete to have sort of a non-differentiated package of common diags, right? Assuming everything lands that it's at the necessary quality that we would need to really use it, right? 
Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so I, I added an action item for me with start on this classification matrix document. Um, yeah, I don't want to do anything uh, at all that, that delays getting code in the repos, right? Because nothing's real until that happens. Yeah, that, that's why I'm saying start on this, because we need to have something production ready in terms of Diax to be able to put it in, in that table. Yeah, and I, I wasn't super concerned about it um, until, uh, you know, we kind of got the OCP message and uh, th that sort of told me two things, right? Um, one is that we didn't have the forcing function that we normally have. Um, you, you know how it usually goes, like we get a lot of stuff done in the last, you know, six weeks right up to the presentation. Uh, we're not going to have that this time around, so maybe we can kind of create an artificial forcing function. But the other thing I worried about too, right, is just by, you know, the talk not getting accepted and I didn't get any data as to why, but you know, is there a lack of sort of confidence in what this particular track is delivering? I don't know if that's the case, but if it is, I still believe in it. So I want to try to get, you know, everything rallied around and make sure that we're all marching in the same direction. Like we've gotten a lot of really interesting, um, uh, sort of like flyby co-travelers and things that are like, hey, we're working on something sort of similar and uh, areas of, you know, both full overlap and partial overlap. But I don't know that we've turned it into like sort of a cohesive, this is what we're all going to deliver together, right? It feels like those very early days of open source pro programs to me. Yeah, well, you know, it is a big project. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, end of speech. <laughs> I'm just glad to be a part of it. I don't want to sound negative, so, right? I'm not, but we do need to start putting together like what we're going to do and, and why we're going to do it. So uh, on on that uh, topic, actually, um, I think I said this before, but if I haven't, I'll, I'll just say it now. Um, even if we don't have uh, a talk at the Global Summit, I think we should still keep the same schedule of uh, artifacts and you know deliverables that we've been working on yeah i agree um but what, what i'll do is um maybe uh i'll start a doc and i'll share it with you adrian i'll make it open to everyone right but we can start putting in sort of like how we believe all these things that are landing soon add up into like uh into the story of that we want to sell Good. Can you include me in the, that discussion as well? Absolutely, Karen. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I think we're, we're done with this topic for now. Um, in the meantime, I see Rajat joined. Uh, so question for you, Rajat. Do you have any status update on the CTAM uh, Diag repo? All right, we'll, we'll get back to this. Um, in, in the meantime, I, I remembered one, one other thing uh, on my questions. Uh, we have this uh, groups IO uh, thing now. I don't know what to call it specifically. Uh, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think uh, everyone is aware of it and I don't think everyone is subscribed to it. And um, be, I, I will deal with this uh, like slowly in time, but essentially um, we need to publicize that uh, subscribe uh, email uh, so that everyone gets the calendar updates. And, you know, I, I, I hope we won't change to another uh, meeting uh, software from Zoom, but if that happens again, then at least we'll have updates. Yeah, the, the, the group's I.O. tool is, uh, it's rough. <laughs> That's what I'll say about it. It is, yeah, it's very 90s software. Yeah, uh, I, I am glad that the, oh, shoot, I'm going to get myself in trouble. I am glad that the Craigslist engineers found a job. <laughs> well, it is now on a recording. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Um, no, it does do what we need it to do, though. Like the one thing that we can't figure out how to do is add people to the list. I think you need to to add yourself, unfortunately. No, that, that's fair. So uh, to, to explain that, what Kevin said was that people need to add themselves because of the GDPR rules and, and all of that. So that's why I'm saying to new people or people interested in any of this, uh, if, if 
whoever from this group talks to to other people like give them the subscribe link as well i'll i'll put it in the meeting notes and it it will be available okay uh rajat you're back um sorry about was, that um, yeah no worries no worries um question was about the status on the ctam uh, yeah so we're pretty close uh we're getting feedback uh uh on on the code as on, on the current uh code structure and a bunch of test cases that we already uh, pushed in. Um, question, uh, should, uh, when we, so I'm, I'm, when we push everything inside, we'll be pushing the test cases as well, right? Uh, my only question was around the logging part, um, Adrian, and uh, uh, I, I kind of the, uh, the confusion I had, and that's what you're trying to clarify on Slack as well was, uh, there is what you call a validator log and there's a generic log, correct? There's a log.json uh, that you have, right? That's a generic log. And there's mm -hmm. the uh, the log that's coming, that's being uh, fed every test run artifact or a test step artifact uh, pushes it into the, uh, the the what's called the main log, right? That's, that's what you, you call the validator log, correct? Um, or I'm, because I I, I I I fail to understand the validators part. Right? Okay, so so I I replied on Slack. I I still don't quite understand your question. Uh, let me let me try to explain what is there, and we can find a, a midpoint. Um, so the the log log artifact that can be emitted either from a run or a step. So that's why you'll see test step artifact with like a log inside it or test run artifact with a log inside it. Mm -hmm. The validators do not intersect with logging in any way. Like validators are something to say uh, whether measurements or a measurement series is validated by said validator. So if it's conformant or not. Okay, so as a part of OCPTV, uh, do you have any example for uh, validator? Yeah, there's there's examples of that in in the Python API examples folder. Arguably, they're synthetic examples, but it's kind of like a short summary of what you would do in a diag. Meaning, does a JSON spec uh, have a sample? So validator is. Validating on top of a law of, of your test run step artifact logs, or does it is it a completely independent aspect that you when you call out? Sorry, I got carried away when you use the term validator. Or is it to do with the measurements part only? It, it is related to measurements. Measurements only. Okay. So if if you're thinking about the the output uh, spec and API to produce that output, that you you have in Python in your case. Um, mm -hmm. That code is currently just meant to be an interface to output the JSON messages so mm -hmm. that you don't have to compose the, the JSON yourself. So it's, it's a Python API to do that. Um, I want to make sure that currently validation only is only used as a declarative output so like your diag says okay this is the validation i'm doing for these measurements these are the measurements and maybe later on the diag also says diagnosis passed or failed whatever based on some internal logic so right. in, in the api there isn't any code to say that, okay, I, you you told me this is the list of validators and whenever you push a new measurement, I will check that the measurement is within the validator uh, spec. That, okay, but that but, isn't but what's validators happening. validators is strictly for physical quantities or is validators also used for logic analysis? Um, logic analysis uh, like say for, say for example you're just looking at a json output and just looking to see hey is it are you you're looking for certain strings and stuff like that just to indicate pass or fail of your test case right as against 
a validator, which my understanding based on your, uh, your explanation right now was to do with measurements. You're actually getting some physical quantity, right? Beat frequency or something. Oh, I, I right? see. I, I see what you're saying. It's validated. Uh, no, me measurements. Yeah. No, no, me measurements can be anything that is measurable. So if you have a JSON and you want to extract text from it, that is still technically measurable. I see. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> when I when I saw measurements, I was like limiting myself to one to, to assume that it would be some physical quantity or some scoring or something. There. I, I would like uh, to maybe add something to this. Um, even though everything Adrian said is true about you know you can obviously measure the text output, look for a matching string and things like that. Um, in our experience, recording data in that way that's not numerical hasn't had a ton of um, a ton of useful applications that we found. It's almost always a measurement with a lower number and an upper limit, like in 99.9% .9 of the time. Got it. But it, yeah, but I'd like to also think along, along lines of our intent, right? We are getting something out from a redfish command, right? Typically our uh, analysis is like, hey, are we getting the right uh, format? Are we getting the right our data? coming out as a JSON format or not. That's kind of pretty predominantly what our test cases look for, right? There's uh, very little to do with, hey, am I getting the expected frequency or am I getting the expected? So do you, but would that still qualify as a measurement? Well, it certainly would be like, for instance, the, the most simplistic example would be like, did I get what I needed? The measurement could be true or false, right? Um, I think okay. the question is, is do you get a lot of value over that as opposed to um, just like a passing step, right? Um, or passing test run. Uh, you certainly do want to record the failure when something goes wrong so people can understand like what is the portion of my output that was not compliant or was lacking or whatnot, right? Um, I'm, remind I'm reminded of a, a, an exercise we went through and Tom will be familiar with it where for manufacturing, we wanted to make sure that all of our um, diagnoses were supported by some type of measurement to indicate why we made the decision that we did. And um, we did go through that exercise, but I don't know that the the data that was generated in a lot of cases was as useful as maybe we thought it was going to be. So I, I just wanted to say the same thing that you just said then, like <laughs> before you started, like the, the measurements are there in the output to act as proof for the diagnosis, right? Um, and ideally, so, the reason why I said this is non-specific is the spec doesn't say you should necessarily have numbers there or uh, an int with whatever precision. Uh, you, you can qualify a, a, anything as a measurement, but it would be you know, ideal to, to map them to some um, clear domain that is countable. Yeah, I, I agree. Ultimately, there's some if statement somewhere in your code that decided pass or fail. The measurement just lifts that out and makes it more apparent, right? Okay. So I'm, uh, because... I'm going to say one one more thing, Rajat. Um, these yeah. questions that you you had right now, uh, it's maybe that other people will have the 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 same questions. So if you didn't find the answers that you were looking for in the spec text, and not, not the, the JSON schema, like the, the, the document itself. Um, I would ask you to like start a discussion or, or something on GitHub so that we can put these details uh, in, into the spec itself. Gotcha, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for the, the update, Rajat. I will put that in the meeting notes. So, so hopefully by the end of the week, we'll have something in there, uh, Adrian, uh, this week itself. Yeah, um, if, if you have other questions, uh, you, you know about the, the Slack. Um, for... Um, for PRs or some initial guidelines, or uh, I don't know exactly how to phrase this. Um, I guess for, for the 
first couple of actions until we we get uh, to to some inertia in, in working with the code then i'm i'm okay like i'm available if you have questions like how would we set up the branches how do we push whatever like is is this uh, pr okay overall like i i can have an, an opinion there if if you want that um yeah but but it, yeah but but overall like the the longer uh, term goal for this is that you have full control over that repo like anything you want to impose there as rules uh, you you are free to do so thanks Ish. okay uh thanks Richard. um Karen, uh, since you're here, do you maybe have any uh, update on the SSD uh, diags that you want to share? So we've been doing some internal planning um, and they're still progressing, but we're not at a point of um, being able to share externally yet. We have um, a hackathon in September, Valley Hack, where Arctic is should be a better option. And Adrian, you're involved in the work of that done as well. All right, thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm in that hackathon. I'm I'm trying to uh, convince people that they should uh, be using the the OCP output spec uh, for the directs so that we we have this good interconnect between various parties in this case where we're talking between odms like some a couple of odms specifically targeted for the ssd diax i suppose the important part at this stage is that um the, the plan of how we're going to approach it is um ocp diag output centric as opposed to anything else which means that the the work that's planned has um, an objective output with meet where we need it to be. Um, so that's the important thing that we're doing. Right. Okay, thanks, Adam. Um, one, uh, one just observation that I've run into because we've got a lot of folks, Adrian, at the moment that we're using the, uh, the sort of pure Python implementation and the feedback that I've gotten now from uh, from three different people, or I wouldn't normally bring it up, was that we need some examples of diags, right, in that particular format. Um, and, you know, I pointed them to the examples of, uh, you know, you've got the one examples folder where you do a measurement, you have sort of like how to use all elements of the um, of the API. And yeah. to me, honestly, that's what I would probably want to see because that like gets all the noise out of it and just shows me what I need to know. That, but that's the, that's exactly why I made that, yeah. Well, I, I kind of agree, but now I've heard from two or three people, but we need a diag and the, we, we probably do need to get one pretty soon to point folks to, uh, which kind of led to my next question, is Tom still here or did he drop off? Uh, I don't see yeah. him. Uh, right. Can can I can I address your point uh, before that? Yeah. So so we we need a diag. Uh, the thing that I was uh, thinking as the example there, and I have been I had had this in my mind for a while is the PCI crawler. Okay. Like Sounds that good. is that is a specific one. But at the same time, if uh, the OC, the the GPU compliance from uh, Boshan and Rajat was ready before that, then that would have acted like the, the diag, sample diag. Yeah, the one that's bad about the GPU compliance, though, is I think it'll be hard for people to run um, unless you happen to have that hardware available, whereas, you know, the PCIe crawler can run on just about anything, right? Fair. I'm, I'm. I was thinking about the codes uh, more than actually running it, but running it has value in itself. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then it's PCI crawler. Um, I'll, I'll ping Paul to, to ask him about the status for this. Okay. Yeah, I spoke to him um a few days ago, and it sounds like he's actually working on it now. He got the build environment set up, and he mentioned he was going to reach out to you for a couple questions, and I think he did. Um, not yet. Okay. But I'll see. 
Sounds good. Hey, folks, I'm sorry. I just noticed the time. I've got to uh, I've got to drop. So um, I will see you guys all next week and uh, I will send out the doc and uh, make sure to copy you all. And Karen, I'll make sure you're an editor as well. OK, Hi. thanks. Dan. Thanks, everybody. OK, uh, does anyone else want, uh, have any topics to raise or we can give back 12 minutes? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Thanks everyone for joining and uh, we'll see you next week.